big question today is if you're new to the game, what should you get for your first set of clubs? You know, there's a lot of options out there. There's thousands and thousands of different head and shaft combinations. So finding the club that is right for you to start your journey into the game of golf is very important. My name is Blaine Seitz. I'm a master club fitter at Second Swing in Columbia, Maryland, and the owner of the Tour Shot Golf Academy. And today, we're going to take a look at the essential things that you need to understand to get the right set of clubs to help you start your game. One of the things we often hear when players are getting started is that they are hesitant to invest in a set of clubs because their swing is ultimately going to change and they're just going to need a new set of clubs. Now, this is why it's very important to understand the proper length, lie, and then the weight and flex for your swing because there are a lot of options out there that are budget friendly that can get you started, get you on the golf course, get you developing your swing and then as you develop your preferences you can always go into a full fit later for an upgraded set. As an example, I've put together a full set here with a driver, a 5 wood, a hybrid, 6 iron through pitching wedge, sand wedge and a putter for all under a hundred dollars. So this is an example of a complete set that you could in theory use for years. When you're just starting out you don't necessarily need a full set of clubs but you do need clubs that are going to fit you. The things that you're going to need to get started are some kind of a wood, that could be a driver, that could be a fairway wood. We're going to look at hybrids, irons, at least one high lofted wedge, and a putter. Now when you're first starting out that's really all you need is a little bit throughout the bag again so long as they're properly fit for you which we're going to go over in a second. Now as your game starts to develop and you start to uh, learn your different preferences of what you like and what works best for you then we can go into a more in-depth fitting where we start to fill the bag. Now here at Second Swing we have several different fitting options available depending on where you are in your journey, your budget, and your skill level. So let's start by understanding what's known as a static fit because this is something that if you were to come into second swing, no matter what kind of fitting we're doing with you, it's the first thing that we're going to start to ask to kind of narrow down the club selection to help you find the best fit. But this is also something that you can do at home and all you need is a tape measure. Now using this chart right here, we can see on the top how long clubs should be based on your height. Now most people are going to fall into what's called standard length and that's appropriate for people anywhere as low as say five foot seven as high as six foot. Now standard length for a seven iron is 37 inches and you can measure that at home by taking a yardstick and holding it from the heel or the hosel of the club all the way up to the top of the grip and that's going to give you a measurement of how long it is. If clubs are too short you're going to have to compromise your posture and bend over or round and slouch and if the clubs are too long you're going to have a hard time clearing through impact and making solid contact. So making sure that the clubs are the right length is very important to getting started. Next up we want to understand lie angle. What is your wingspan? compared to your height. If I come onto this chart and find 5 foot 9 and come down to 33 and a half inches, we see that I fall into standard length clubs bent one degree flat. Now if you're just starting off, one degree is not the end of the world, but as you get better and refine your swing, that lie angle is really important. And what we're talking about when we talk about lie angle is when the club makes contact with the ball, we want to know if the club is going through the turf flat, toe up, or toe down. And this is important because if the club is toe up, the ball is going to want to curve to the left and hook for a right-handed golfer. And if the toe is down, the ball is going to kind of push off to the right and want to fade or slice, again, for a right-handed golfer. So it's very important that the club is going flat through the turf so that when you make a good swing you're rewarded with a good shot. So when we start to understand the big three, the length, the lie, and then the weight and flex of the club, we can start to look at the options that will best fit us so that we can develop a proper swing. If you don't know your club speed then we need to start to understand which club you would use from 150 yards. So the next time you're out at the range, look for that 150 yard target 
and figure out which club it takes to hit the ball to that target, assuming good contact. So if you're hitting a, say, 9 iron, or even less, maybe a wedge from 150 yards, and we're talking carry distance, how far the ball goes in the air, then you're probably going to fall into the extra stiff spectrum. Now, if you go from that 9 iron and you lean towards maybe an 8, you're probably a little bit closer to stiff in the flex and the weight. When we go into, say, a 7 iron, you're probably falling a little bit closer to a regular flex shaft. And then when we need something more than that, maybe a six iron or even a hybrid, you're probably falling into a soft or regular or even a ladies type flex. So now that you know what goes into getting fit for your first set, head to secondswing.com and check out our inventory of nearly 100,000 pre-owned clubs. Or come check us out at one of our locations in person. We'll be happy to help you out.